G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. It is April 26, 2023, and once again, I'm in my radio shack. Earlier in the year, I associated an email address with my channel so my subscribers could contact me to ask me questions or provide feedback regarding my videos. And overwhelmingly, the number one most requested subject people emailed me about is how to decode GSM, and more specifically, how to use GRGSM. In response to this inundation of emails, I intend to make a four or five part video series on how exactly GSM or 2G is decoded with the GRGSM toolset. Before we start, let me make a distinction between decoding and decrypting. There's plenty of unencrypted data that can be decoded on GSM control channels and GRGSM can show us this data with the aid of Wireshark. Generally, voice calls, SMS messages, and GPRS data are sent over encrypted traffic channels. We can't decrypt this data without knowing the encryption key, or KC value, as it is known in GSM engineering speak. Some mobile phones, such as early Apple iPhones, Samsung Galaxies, and Blackberries, have an engineering screen, which can be accessed and displays the current encryption key the mobile phone is using to secure the private data. If the encryption key isn't known to you, the process of obtaining that key is called cracking, but that is beyond the scope of this video. And I've covered the topic of GSM cracking in previous content on my channel before. So this tutorial series I intend to make will only be a very basic guide on how to use GRGSM and decode GSM data downlinked from base transceiver stations or more, the more common name we know them by, cell towers. So before we start decoding GSM, we will go through some of the things that are required for decoding GSM downlinks with GRGSM. Obviously we need a PC. I'm using an Asus ZenBook Flip. It has plenty of power for using this software to find radios and decoding digital stuff. It's a very nice laptop. Uh, next, you will need a flavor of Linux running on your PC. The Linux distribution I am using for this tutorial is Dragon OS Focal X by SEMA Executor. It has everything you need for D GSM decoding installed and working out of the box. And also I'll just mention that it's not recommended to use a virtual machine of Linux for GSM decoding. When it comes to software defined radio, it is always better to have Linux running natively on your computer. USB pass-through on virtualization host can cause problems and compatibility. So, um, If you aren't a regular Linux user, such as myself, um, you can follow this tutorial here to make a bootable USB thumb drive. This tutorial is really nice because it uses Lubuntu as the example, which is the Linux distribution in which Dragon OS is built upon. So all the screenshots are the same. So yeah, very nice tutorial. The USB thumb drive I use for booting Dragon OS natively on my laptop is a SanDisk USB Extreme Pro 256 gigabyte. And the performance is very good in my experience. Uh, uh, next, we'll need a software defined radio to receive the GSM signals with. I'm using a Neuralex Smart TXTR, SDR, which is here. Uh, it, it's an essentially just an RTL SDR with an Elonix E4000 tuner, which extends the maximum frequency range from 1.7 gigahertz up to about 2.3 gigahertz, which means I can receive GSM cells operating in the 1800 megahertz band. If you're using a RTL SDR, these things only go to 1.7 gigahertz, which means you can only receive 900 megahertz and 850 megahertz band GSM signals. So software wise, now we'll need a few things. Specifically GNU radio, and then finally GRGSM. Both of these have various dependencies that will also need to be installed, but 
This is a mammoth task alone, so I recommend just using Dragon OS Focal instead because everything's in there ready to go. And lastly, we we will just need to know some basic usage of Linux, such as opening a terminal, running commands with arguments, and changing directories via the command line. So I'll just switch over to my camera now. Um, ignore the Blade RF and the Lime SDR Mini sitting here. These are only to simulate two GSM base stations for the purposes of this video because Australia has no active GSM networks. We shut down the last one in 2018, I believe. We still have GSM railway apparently, but not where I live in Australia. So now that we have our hardware and software set up, we can actually begin some usage of the GRGSM software suite. In order for us to decode data downlinked from a GSM based transceiver station, we need to actually find if there is any GSM cells operating around us. This can be done with GRGSM by utilizing the GRGSM underscore scanner utility. But first, let me set the scene hardware and software wise now. I have my laptop plugged into AC power and turned on obviously I have Linux running on bare metal booted from a USB thumb drive I have my software defined radio plugged into USB and an antenna is attached to the RF port in Dragon OS Linux you can check if your SDR dongle is available and visible to your computer by running the following command And we can see that my Elonix E4000 tuner has been found. And also the Lime SDR Mini, which is running one of the GSM base stations. So GRGSM underscore scanner is the binary executable we will be utilizing in order to scan for any GSM signals around us. There are two ways to run this application, which are dependent on how you compiled and installed GRGSM. If you are running Dragon OS Focal X, ignore this part of the tutorial because we can run GRGSM scanner from the command line in the terminal like this. And we'll send the H argument. So that's the first way to run GRGSM scanner. So if you haven't installed GRGSM, but you have compiled it, most probably you compiled it inside your home directory. So what we can do is we can enter the GRGSM directory, go into the apps folder, and we can see that the GRGSM scanner binary is here. So if you haven't installed GRGSM, you've only compiled it inside your home directory, we can run GRGSM scanner like so. We have to change directory, cd. And we change directory into the grgsm apps folder. And you run the binary like so. Put a dot slash grgsm underscore scanner and send it the H argument. And you can see that the we have successfully run the binary from its directory. And we'll just CD back to our home directory now because we have installed G 
grgsm so we there is no need for us to change directory into the binaries folder so now that we know how to run the grgsm scanner utility we can now send it some instructions via the command line my two transmit capable sdrs are each running a separate gsm cell somewhere in the dcs 1800 band which is around 1.8 gigahertz if you're using an rtl sdr you can only receive gsm signals in the 850 and 900 megahertz bands so the fastest way to get started with the gr gsm scanner binary is to simply write the following into the terminal window so we have typed the name of the binary we have sent it the b argument which stands for band and the band that my two cells are operating on is the DCS 1800 band. This is the easiest way to get started with GRGSM scanner, but because we are super cool elite hackers, we will get our hands dirty with some more specific arguments to send to the binary. So if we send it the H or H argument, sorry, I should use proper grammar. We can see the following options are available for us to configure and send to the binary. So what I'll write is the, uh, once, once more, I'll write the name of the binary, put a space. We're going to put the B argument for DCS1800. Whoops. And we can see here the different bands that are available for us to configure. So the next argument we will send is the sample rate. And we know that RTL SDR tuner chips have a bandwidth of 2.4 mega samples per second. And in engineering notation, that is 2.4 E5, it means 24 with five zeros, which is 2.4 mega samples per second. We will also add the P argument. The P argument is frequency correction in PPM. So we know that RTL SDRs generally have a oscillator drift of about 0 0.5 PPM. So we'll just round that up to one and we'll add a one for the PPM correction. Because my antenna, receiving antenna is very close to the transmitting an antennas, I'll just set a very low gain of 10. And finally, or well not finally, we still have a few more. We'll set the speed. So we write two hyphens and write the word speed and we'll set the maximum speed of 29. And then finally we will add the V argument for verbose. It'll show us, verbose means we'll, it'll show us a little bit more data than what it normally would. And once we have written out our command, we hit the enter button. If we let this run for a few seconds, it, we will begin to see my simulated GSM base stations begin to appear and details of them are printed into the terminal window. I can hit control C now to quit GRGSM scanner because I know for a fact there are no more GSM cells around me because I'm in Australia and we do not have any active GSM networks anymore. So the most relevant information we obtained from GRGSM scanner is the frequencies. So we have one of the cells operating on 1806.8 megahertz and the second cell is operating on 1805.2 megahertz uh, the reason that the frequency is the most 
valuable data we've obtained because now we can use this frequency in conjunction with other binaries of the GRGSM software suite such as GRGSM Live Monitor, GRGSM Capture and GRGSM Decode which I'll be making separate videos for over the coming days. So that's about all I have for the usage of GRGSM scanners. Um, that is by far the most easy way to find out if you actually have receivable GSM base stations transmitting around you. Um, stay tuned for part two of my GRGSM video series, which will cover the live decoding of a GSM control channel using the using Wireshark and the GRGSM live monitor utility. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Bye.